Hi, my favorite readers, Miss Miranda here. I'm missing you all a lot today and hoping you're doing well. Um, tonight we had a special request from Scholar Vivian who called in and we got to FaceTime earlier today and it was the highlight of my day. It was really great to see her face. So shout out to Vivian if you're watching. Um, tonight I'm gonna read a few of these influential women. The title of this book is called Shaking Things Up and it's about 14 young women who changed the world. It's written by Susan Hood and illustrated by 13 extraordinary women. This book starts out with a really beautiful timeline about some of the women and all the beautiful things that they have done. So I'll show you a quick picture. And it goes in chronological order. That means we're gonna be reading about some of these women who came first and then later on and later on. <clears throat> Our first reader, or our first person that we're gonna learn about tonight is called Taking the Heat. Her name is Molly Williams. And Molly is the first known female firefighter in the United States. And it says, years passed in New York City streets, a blizzard whipped the air. Despite the heavy falling snow, a fire scorched the square. The steeples clanged the town alarm, boy runners spread the news. But firemen were sick abed with influenza blues. A local servant knew the drill. She'd seen what must be done. She hauled the pumper truck by hand, adept as any one. In raging flames and choking smoke, brave Molly took the heat. With hose and ax, she met the blaze to save the house and the streets. The fire laddies gave her praise, respect where it was due, dubbed her Volunteer 11, a member of their crew. She glowed with pride, a pioneer. She blazed a path, it's true, Yet women weren't hired here till 1982. So Molly was the first known um, female firefighter and she was alive, she was born in, in 1747 and she passed in 1821. So even though she helped out that night, they still didn't hire their first female firefighter until 1982. And that's the story of Molly. Our next female we're gonna talk about tonight is called Pura Belpri. And they, she's a children's author and she's the first Latina librarian at the New York Public Library. So she's an author. Um, she, so it says author and it's a beautiful poem. It's in ABC order. You'll notice the lines there. It says a author, amiga, bilingual book buyer, community champion for children, defender of the downtrodden, empowering educator, folklorist, fairy tale teller, grower of gifts, Harlem history maker, inner city innovator, joyful Johnny Appleseed. Known for Perez y Martina, legendary Latina librarian, multicultural mosaic maker, New York narrator for Niños, outgoing organizer, Puerto Rican puppeteer, querida, role model, Spanish story seed sower, trilingual translator, uplifter of the underprivileged, voice for the voiceless, weaver of wonder, expert in Espanol, young at heart, and she is a zealot. So this is the first Latina librarian to work in the New York Public Library. The next one, my scholars know very, very well. This is author, or sorry, artist Frida Kahlo. And we studied her during Latinx History Month. Um, she's an amazing artist that we discussed a lot about. And we actually did some paintings based on Frida's artwork as well. So this says Broken by Frida Kahlo, the artist. Broken from polio at age six, from a withered foot, childhood bully shouting, Frida, pata de pelo, Frida, peg leg. Broken again from a bus accident when she was only 18. Spine, collarbone, pelvis, ribs, leg, and foot smashed. Confined to bed in a full body cast with an easel on her lap and a mirror above her bed. Frida painted self-portraits. I am the subject I know best, she says. She breathed in the colors, handicrafts, carvings, clothing of her homeland, Mexican, Aztec, Mayan. Art flowed from her fingertips. Paintings of skulls, skeletons, stags, flowers, fantasy, and fragility. 
Surrealism is the stuff of dreams and nightmares. But Frida said, I paint my own reality. Mexico, misfortune, monkeys, misery, marriage to Diego Rivera, politics, parrots, passion, and pain. Frailty, thy name is woman, wrote Shakespeare. An idea echoing through the ages, yet Frida embodied strength despite her pain, achieving fame and worldwide acclaim. This next one is entitled Full Circle, and it's the story of Frances Moore Lape, an anti-hunger activist. Here's her story. This is the earth that Lape dreamed, the woman who wrote, eat more greens, broccoli, lettuce, squash, and beans, who built a diet of veggie cuisine that keeps our bodies strong and lean, that stops the wasteful meat machine that feeds a local food routine, that saves the cost of gasoline, that keeps our soil and water clean, that helps the hungry grow more beans, cabbage, kale, and collard greens. This is the earth that Lafe dreamed. She has a quote here. It says, every choice we make can be a celebration of the world that we want. A new school. This is the story of Ruby Bridges, who we discussed a lot in Room 22 about. Um, Ruby Bridges was a civil rights pioneer from a really, really young age. She was one of the first um, black children to help integrate schools. So we'll read a little bit about her here. Ruby had a new school, William Franz. Mama wanted the very best. But who were these men with badges? Ruby wasn't so sure. Screaming masses flanked the school men and women holding signs, perhaps a parade, maybe for Mardi Gras. Ruby wasn't sure. One marshal said, don't look back. Was that a gun at his side? Just what did segregation even mean? Ruby wasn't so sure. Why did the grown-ups point at her and pull their kids from that school? Why were they all so angry? Ruby wasn't sure. Why did she and Mama sit all day in the office by themselves? Had she done something wrong? Again, Ruby wasn't sure. Ruby was banned from the lunchroom, banned from recess every day. Why did her daddy even call her brave? Ruby wasn't sure. She spent first grade with her teacher, Mrs. Henry, in a classroom just for one. Where were the other children? Ruby wasn't sure. But Ruby never missed a day. With her teacher by her side, two heroines stood hand in hand, their bond a bridge for sure. And there's a quote here, it says, kids know nothing about racism. It's adults who pass this on to kids. And there's a little blurb about Ruby. She's still alive today. Um, she was born in 1954. And it says Ruby Bridges was just six years old when she was escorted by four U.S. Marshals as she marched into an all-white school in New Orleans and became an icon of the civil rights movement. Only one teacher agreed to take her as their student. So Ruby and Mrs. Henry spent first grade together in a class all for one, reading, spelling, singing songs, and doing jumping jacks. In the fight to end segregation, little Ruby was the one who led the way. And she's also the one who's on our cover page tonight. She's an inspiration to all of us. Very courageous little one. Lift Off. This is the story of Dr. Mae Jemison, who we talked about on Monday night. Um, Mae Jemison, like we learned, she's the first African-American astronaut, female African-American astronaut, to go to space. And her story says, an African proverb says, no one shows a child the sky, no need. Head back, it's there in their eyes. Glittering stars, swirling galaxies fill her, thrill her. Even though her kindergarten teacher says, you wanna be a scientist? Don't you mean a nurse? Even though she's a scaredy cat, afraid of the dark, she looks up. Afraid of heights, she looks back down. She skins her shins and muddies her dress because she needs to know. 
A Wrinkle in Time, and Star Trek's Eura say women can be scientists, even rocket scientists. Ignition. All systems are go. Three, two, one. Blast off! And this quote says, never be limited by other people's imaginations. May didn't let anyone stop her from reaching her dreams and goals. And I think our last hero that we'll study tonight um, is Malala. And her title, the title of her story says, Books, Not Bullets. And Malala is being, is, she's famous for a few things, one of which is being the youngest winner of the Nobel Peace Prize. And Malala was born in Pakistan. And we'll learn a little bit about her here. She had been shot. The bullet went in her left eye and out her left shoulder. Flown to safely in England, Malala couldn't forget the beatings, bodies, and bombs back in her paradise valley of Pakistan. Her beloved school was closed for girls. Malala had spoken out. Just 11, she wrote a blog for the BBC. They are misusing the name of Islam, she said. Don't they know that the first word of the Holy Quran is read? Her mother feared for her life. The Taliban don't kill children, they said. They were wrong. The gunman stopped her school bus and asked for her by name. He fired three bullets. One hit its mark. The news ricocheted around the world, but only her fear died that day. She said, strength, power, and courage were born. I am those 66 million girls who are deprived of education. Pens, not weapons, she preached. Books, not bullets, she said. The world heard and bestowed upon her its highest honor, the Nobel Peace Prize. Malala, one young girl who stood up, one voice that would not be silenced. She can change the world. And her quote says, there's a moment when you have to choose whether to be silent or to stand up. And in room 22, my friends know what we call that. That's someone who's an upstander. They stand up to people who are doing the wrong thing and they stand up for something that they believe in. We've studied a lot of activists in our class who are upstanders. Malala was a huge upstander in Pakistan and she fought for girls to get an education, um, even when there were threats against her own life. And it says, Malala was born in 1997. She's still alive today. She shared the 2014 Nobel Peace Prize with Kalish from India. She will use the $500,000 prize to build secondary schools in Pakistan. In 2012, she launched the Gul Makai Network, named for Gul Makai, the pen name that she used on her BBC blog. It pledges up to $10 million a year to support girls' education in developing countries such as Afghanistan, Lebanon, Nigeria, Pakistan, and Turkey. Um, and then there's an author's note as the last page that I'll read tonight. It says, never be limited by other people's imaginations, said astronaut Dr. Mae Jemison. Over the years, politics, religion, and polite society have tried to define what a woman should be, tried to restrict our behavior, speech, rights, aspiration, and even choice of clothing. But women have faced adversity head on to find poverty, illness, war, and discrimination to change the world for men and women alike. Choosing the 14 movers and shakers in this book was the hardest part of the project, a good problem to have. And this is by no means an all-inclusive list. With young readers in mind, I decided to focus on girls and young women, a few well-known, some less known, and a couple mostly unknown as yet. I chose a firefighter, an astronaut, a painter, two secret agents among others who have stirred the pot and shaken up stereotypes, all to build and create a better world for our young girls. Researching their stories, I was sometimes shocked at what they had to endure, but I was always in awe of their against all odds achievements. Take Mary Ani, who was 11 when her father passed away, leaving her family deeply in debt and close to starving. She earned money the only way she knew how, selling seaside fossils to British tourists. When she discovered um, one of the fossils at age 13 and later another and another, Mary helped split scientific theory wide open. Her groundbreaking finds helped pave the way for Charles Darwin's On the Origin of Species, published 
47 years later, and a brand new science, paleontology. Very cool. And then the end just has a lot of the sources that were used to create this book, about all of these different women. Very cool. Thank you for tuning in and watching, friends. Please leave me a comment and let me know what was one new thing you learned about one of the women you heard about tonight, and I'll respond to your comments. I miss you all. I love you. Bye.